So look at the ease of storage cluster. Remember these other ideas? This, you know, turning idea, the folding idea, the, you know, the Greek helmet idea. In this, the student somehow selected, you know, the receding idea, amalgamated these two and he didn't take one idea together. He said that I would like to make it very slim. So he started with this, which is part of the receding idea. He chose that as a champion and then, you know, <coughs> took it forward from here. See how we, the ideas were developed by using other ideas putting together. And then came up with this where you press and you push the both shells inside and becomes very narrow. This is an ease of storage idea. And then comes the ease of use cluster. Remember the ideas? This idea, those ideas, all put together. And finally, this was taken as a champion. This idea was taken as a champion. Because this has been, like you just put like a cap and push it down, right? It's much more easy to wear. So that was considered as the main idea. So this is further developed because the net is too large, a lot of gaps. It won't, you know, it won't uh, be acceptable as a helmet. So those gaps were reduced. So here you can see how the net is becoming smaller and the helmet shells are becoming larger. But still, that whole idea is going inside. And finally, you can see the concept building into it concept C, which is the ease of use. So your three concepts, that competition between the concepts is a very, very critical thing. And from these three concepts now, we need to find out which ones will we use for the current product brief. Product brief was very, very clear. You would have encouragement of use. You should have, you know, uh, the, like basically good storage and you should have good ventilation also. So all the three can have all the three in three different degrees, right? First one is very difficult to store. It's still large. Whereas this one is easy to store, it's ventilatable also. This one is easy to store, it's ventilatable and easy to wear. So automatically, the last one got selected as the, you know, concept to go forward. And then we went to experts and asked them, what do you think about this helmet? They said, horrible. <laughs> Who would want to wear a helmet which is broken from the beginning? Isn't it an interesting perception? And this is the first reaction from the scientists and the engineers is like, this is like broken helmet. You to, you to, and your designers, you should have a perception to make it look strong and not broken. So then, you know, the Dr. Dinesh Mohan, again a professor, he said, this is not going to work. At least make it two-part receding. Then the, you know, we reworked the whole design, made it two-part receding. And so that the gap is also hidden and it only collapses when you need to store and you don't, you know, see the you know, break very, you know, clearly. And different sketches were made. And this is how the first conception uh, came up of what the helmet should look like. Uh, so, does the break like sacrifice structural integrity? Like in a collision, would Very it cause question. more damage? So, just tell me, will the break compromise on the structural integrity of saving a person's head? Uh, breaks will make it, like it will absorb more shock. It will absorb more shock because you're getting closer to your head. The snug fit helmet is the best helmet for saving your life. And when the and when the hit happens, it doesn't happen. Something is not hitting you all around your head. Got it? Whichever side you hit, it gets closer and it and, and the and the fitting also is much better and you get much better, much better protection. And that's very counterintuitive, right? So you got a much bigger task of convincing users. That's better than the other one. And you should do you should do evaluation by doing testing also. So here we have one of our Mandar's friend wearing the helmet and showing you know how the uh, helmet works. And this is called the first working rig. Working rig will not be aesthetically pleasing. It will it will be built by using existing helmet parts. So he took a large he took three large helmets, chopped them, and created a create a helmet which will collapse, right? He doesn't have the, you know, and then, you know, showed us how the thing works. Use the same buckle. He didn't even use an elastic buckle. It's supposed to be elastic, right? That's why it's a rig. It's not a mock-up. When you use a mock-up, what will happen? It will not work, but I can wear. It won't collapse, but I can show. I'll show you a mock-up also. This is a mock-up. When it is full, this is the helmet. When it is collapsed, this is the helmet. It doesn't work and the volume becomes nearly reduces by two thirds, one third, sorry. So you have mock-ups. This is a scaled mock-up. You can have a full-scale mock-up, which I have some in the lab. We actually have a 
innovation studio when the student finished this project we want to carry this project forward and we took it up in the you know shenoy innovation studio and we started working on this by now experienced designers experienced engineers to take this forward when the student does their juries during their final presentation they have to show one photo realistic rendering which is the actual shape of the helmet the form and style either show a working rig or a mock up model full scale mock up model please make a very good photo realistic mock up also which is as close to the mass manufactured product because nobody should be able to change your design intent later on now we are back to the innovation studio so innovation studio is a professional organization right it is it's not a student body anymore we got experienced designers who are four five to six experience we got engineers we use a lot of consultants from outside to work with us whenever we have problems in uh, you know any of the materials and manufacturing and tooling remember i was telling you one helmet doesn't fit all so we said you know whom are we working for so they came up with a persona an office going person that has the largest population of people who are using two wheelers and they have you know the maximum problem so we chose that persona and this is that persona then we found out their you know daily routine the average distances they travel the type of vehicles they use the type of shoes they use so get the whole demographic information about this persona so that you are now clear about your segment of the user so with that segment of the user comes the very important task of showcasing the features of your helmet so remember we were telling that the helmet will have you know a very good strap which is elastic in nature there no buckling it has a duct detail so that the breeze will go in remember each concept has to have all the features so the breeze goes in and comes out so it it you know keeps the head cool there's a adjustable clamping system so the elastic is not too hard on your chin so you you know adjust using the clamps which will which will take all the details of that then you have these vents which will take care of all the ventilation effectively then you also have this very interesting rubber this rubber is very important right because if it's raining the water should not go in but it should also collapse and open up so the rubber detailing is very critical so this is the initial sketches of the rubber detailing when the you know when the helmet goes in how will the rubber sort of become straight and the helmet goes in and when you push it out how will the rubber block the you know block the gap so this this is a very large working and we nearly spent 3 months working on this one detail it is that tough when you have a nice concept it's easy to say okay it will go in and come out but when you have a rubber detail over there how will the rubber work and the biggest challenge was the thermocol can i have a straight cut in the thermocol i can't because that area will be weak if there is an accident in that corner the person will die so we need to have an overlap and at the overlap the the distance is minimum 22 mm at all the lengths of the overlap so this, once you do an overlap then the helmet was becoming very large so multiple problems but these are all the features which the you know uh, helmet had to carry so then came all the product detailing aspects how will you detail out how will you rivet how the you know shell will go in and out the head dimensions the control dimensions how will the dimensions work what are the other critical things and these are generally designer doodles are very important for you to you know uh, articulate and you know come out of your thought process so this is called you know externalizing your thought process when you sketch for example when you sketch you know he's looking down but when you sketch you externalize your thought process and then when you resketch again do you see the number of lines when you resketch again what happens you are internalizing and externalizing again so that the doodles have a very important creative journey in any design journey so then we did all the detailing of how will the thermocol shell work what type of shape what type of plastic you know covering <coughs> should come on it and how will the plastics break and lock into each other remember this plastic shell has to lock into this plastic shell right so how will the locking happen will it be very wobbly or loose remember one of you are saying it can be more dangerous if it's not good enough that will go and pierce your head if your helmet is not if i have too many ribs that can go and hurt you so you not as per is standards you can't have any you know projections inside so you have to be very careful in all your detailing of how your detailing will be done so all these you know sketches are all about detailing and taking the mock up model remember we had the design solution to the next level of uh, product development and then the biggest challenge was you know how will your top be buckled to the bottom see you have the top shell and that has to be buckled to the bottom shell this aspect was you know thought of multiple times should this shell be connected to this 
and then this should be connected to the chin. That's one option. Second option is the top one should be connected to the to the strap, and this should be connected to the top. You got it? Because the top should be tightest. So this is connected to my chin, and this fellow is just hanging over there with the top. That's one option. So you have multiple options of thought. So that this is another very very big challenge of strapping. How will you strap the helmets was also a very very challenging task. This also took a lot of time. Nearly how many years? It took nearly two years to come up with to sort out all this. And then came the final design details. You can see how the thermocol has slots, how the strapping. So finally, what we decided, we are strapping from the top, right? We are strapping from the top through the thermocol that's coming. Then strapping from the bottom. The bottom is hanging there. And it, hence your you know buckle is very so this is at one stage we have multiple stages of development this is one stage of development and after this stage of development uh, like uh, you know uh, Mr. Chari was our own alumnus with a lot of experience in industry you know uh, again you know went out and joined another company and then we had another designer who joined us called Ashish so Ashish now is a you know MDS from Indian Institute of Science was sitting continuously on this product for another one and a half years so remember I was telling you uh, every idea which is creative and which is good for the user can be detailed out to become a good concept. If you have, so that was a very strong belief in me. I said, I'm not going to leave this. If collapsing is going to solve my problem of both ventilation and ease of storage and ease of wearing, I'm going to leave no stone unturned to see to it that this is implemented from multiple levels, the materials used, the technology used, the manufacturing technology, we'll do everything to take it forward. So we then did the digital sculpting to get all the shapes right. Now the very uh, important aspects start happening. Remember when you see this helmet wore on a head, you won't see the break because it's in the top, right? So we, we had to take this cut inside. It is no longer outside. Remember the earlier helmet, the cut was outside. You can see it. Now the cut is inside. So user perception was also a very, very important aspect for us. We took that and then we you know got all the detailing done. We went back and did the strapping to the bottom section. So we did strapping to this one. And, and attach this to this one, that was a much better idea. Because when you pull this, this automatically sits. And uh, finally, you know, this is uh, one of the stylized versions, which we couldn't uh, fabricate because the thermocol was not fitting in. So this also had to be rejected. And then, you know, we built the, you know, final option where with the, with the step coming in and with that step, we used a 3D printing machine very creatively to vertically to make both the shells of the product. And you know, with this, uh, we uh, came up with the uh, option of uh, the rib and the support structure, and how you know, for example, the volume of you know travel which will happen inside. And we also checked the thermocol how it will go in. So this is a final redesign option with the visor of uh, the total uh, design, uh, which had all the components of the collapsing, the ventilation, and the visor is a very important component anyway. And this is the final detailing of how the whole product was made with all the clamps, buckles, rivets to put all the uh, uh, all the parts together. And uh, from the CAD model, we you know uh, did uh, uh, did multiple three D uh, prints. You know th there would be an error over here, so we'd print again and join that. So in this case, this is the the bottom shell, and then we also have the gasket. 3D printed. Unfortunately, the 3D printed gasket was not very, you know, uh, was not very good. So it became very tight when we assembled it. Some of the components are very difficult to 3D print because the hard components are very easy. The flexible components, generally, it is good to mold them. They're available in the market, we'll mold them because the molding cost is not very high. For example, the tool cost for this part could be as high as 8 lakhs. Whereas the gasket tool, you know, would just be 2000 bucks. So it's good to, you know, do the gasket in real and do this as 3D print for your trial purposes after that you can you know take uh, you know things can go forward and then you know we came up with the final version of how the collapse state whatever volume it will occupy then we also see that it, it it forms like a little little small rectangular space so it's easy to put in a bag so you can go into a bag which is like a slot or you can put on the rack so multiple you know uh, advantages uh, come in and we also get, want to have ventilation from the top so if you lift the gasket Ventilation ports are available for air breathing in. So these are the you know designs which came up as the final design. I think as of now in this design, we kept the visor fixed and it can be you know 
uh, it can be actually swelled up. Uh, but actually, you know, if you remove the screws, it's removable. So, if you, somebody wants to buy a uh, helmet without the wires, they can buy it. So, that is that type of option currently available. But we thought when we did the survey, you know, with the mock up models, everybody said that they would need a visor. Okay. Also, uh, did you consider space for spectacles? Yes. So, that was a very important component. So, where you can see the type of visor just coming out so much. So, if you see the model, uh, you know, enough room is there, you know, the visor comes out like that. So, this is the, you know, the, the first prototype we made and we tested uh, by wearing. Look at the distance, pretty large, the visor. So, then what happened, the, then we integrated the little cap type design uh, with the visor. So, this is the visor, you know, where, you know, the cap was integrated, still under progress. Uh, making the transparent 3D printed parts are very difficult. So, we are not able to get in single component. So, we actually did this 3D printing and we will be using a transparent gasket over here, but still doesn't exactly mimic what you want. So, we plan to mold this, you know, finally to get the visor right. Our another idea was, can I just snap on the visor and whenever I want, I snap it on and I take it out. So, this also, you know, has this elastic uh, for wearability. So, it's easy to wear. So, but it has a special purpose to, you know, the way you have to wear, you have to be trained to wear it. So, this is very critical. So, we were just wondering how, because if you wear it with an elastic, it has to be coming from the front. You know, so we are trying to see how we can, you know, integrate that as a convenience of wear. And, you know, opening also has to happen like this. So, we are trying to, you know, block it and, you know, see to it that it's always blocked over here. So, when you're wearing, you have to put your fingers in here and wear. So, it's always locked like this, no? Locked like this. So, that is still working out. So, that's one. And then, it, you know, it collapses inside and becomes like this much. If the visor should have been there, the visor is there, the visor would open up a little bit and also because visor is from here to here. Now, this has been gone into the visor, so it will open up and it will become this close. The casket is made of either EPDM or we can use uh, polyurethane and it is also injection molded. You can use engineering plastics, which is like polycarbonates and ABSs for, for motorcycle racing. But if you are doing your regular, to, you know, regular work, uh, which is here, it can be, you know, a simple blend of ABS, which will be much stronger. So, these are all two more injection molded parts. The, the thermocol shells are made of, you know, expanded polystyrene, you'll have, so here my challenge is, remember the earlier helmet had only two dies, my, I have four, two plastic dies, two thermocol dies, one visor die, and then the elastic strap. In fact, I must give you a good example over here. Did I tell you about this example of uh, the VIP luggage company? The VIP luggage company, uh, there is, uh, you know, my senior from IDC who is the head of the vice president now. And he is based in Hong Kong to source all the components. Because if you are not, if you are if you're in the world market in luggage, you have to have the components and the ecosystem at a level which is common with the world. The zippers, the plastic trims in the luggage, or the polycarbonate shells have to be at that level. So, that is a very important understanding for us that <coughs> to innovate, you also have to have an ecosystem around you which will work very effectively to take things forward.